People know that it's important to take daily prenatals, not only for the health of themselves, but the health of the baby. What they don't know is a prenatal movement routine, a specific movement routine for how the pelvis changes throughout pregnancy is also vital for the health of the baby. My name is Dr. Jocelyn Conley. I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist and co-founder of The Vagina Docs. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why these four specific exercises are vital and should be considered prenatals that you do every day and go over those four exercises. Throughout the nine months of pregnancy, our body undergoes a significant change. And while it seems slow and gradual, it's really a big change in a short period of time, considering how our body changes just in general. Now, being that we live in three-dimensional space, it's important that we do exercises or prenatal exercises that accommodate for the changes in our bodies in three-dimensional space. The most significant area of change is going to be the pelvic area as well as the abdominal wall. Now, our three cardinal planes of motion are this plane of motion where we're moving forward and back or my arms going out here, the plane of motion that, go, that I'm moving in now called the frontal plane, and then the plane of motion that goes like this where I'm spinning, and that could be my whole body or that could be a single joint, and that goes for all the planes. That's called the transverse plane. Our pelvis does all of this to varying degrees. Now, if we, as our body changes, we want to address these planes of motion daily because we're imposing very small amounts of good stressors to the body that allows our tissues to accommodate uh, gradually throughout the pregnancy. So what this allows us is to move pain-free because we're more stable. If we just do, do things like go for walks, maybe it's yoga, I mean, that's good. Movement is so important and any movement is better than none. But if we add these specific exercises for these planes, we are going to be just a lot more capable of moving without too much excessive movement in our pelvic region and our spine. So that tells our brain that we're safe and we don't tense up. How this translates to the health of the baby is, if mom is super stressed because she's in pain, then that's going to translate to the developing baby. There is growing bodies of knowledge that higher stress during gestation translates to how the baby develops. So it's really important that we keep stressors low or negative stressors such as pain that limits your ability to move and do the things that you love, pain or, or instability that limits your activity, therefore you're not as strong, therefore the labor is more intense and the delivery can be more traumatic. Now that you know the why, let's dive into the four exercise variations that are going to be essential for you to do daily throughout your pregnancy so that you're exposing your body and training your body gradually and that you can remain stable, pain-free, and then you're ready to go during your delivery. If you find that this content is useful, we post all things about pelvic health. So please subscribe and then like this video as well and share it with people you know could benefit. Before I dive into the exercises, keep in mind that these exercises are just one version of the type of exercise or the target area that we want to work. But it can be modified for different positions and then just subtle variations, but it's important we just train these basic groups. First group of muscles are going to be the adductors. These muscles allow for stability in the front side of the pelvis, super important for walking, super important for getting in and out of the car and rolling. If these muscles aren't strong, your abdominals are gonna have to overcompensate. And if the abdominals are stretching throughout the pregnancy, it's going to be harder. So you may experience pain in the pubic region or your back or tailbone. What you'll need is a ball, a pillow folded in half, or a yoga block. You're gonna lie on your back and place the yoga block. The easiest is going to be the narrow end, hardest is going to be the most wide end, In the middle is going to be the middle end. Align your spine in neutral, and if you're not sure how to get there, check out the video below that I've linked. It teaches you how to set up in the supine position, which we're in now. Feet are flat, chin is tucked, chest is open. We connect to the core gently. Again, check out the video below if you're not sure. 
And once I connect my core so I'm in a stable position here, I'm gonna gently squeeze this block between my knees without squeezing my butt. I'm gonna hold this for five seconds and then I'm gonna ease off. Whenever I contract, it's gradual. It's kind of like a light dimmer and a slight dimmer than on off switch. And I recommend my patients typically hold for five seconds. After that five seconds, ease off. You should feel this in between your inner thighs or your groin area. Common areas, errors will be tipping the pelvis under. That's more common than the back arching. And if you tend to have pain, there's something going on likely with soft tissue that needs to be addressed or your muscular recruitment through your core. Sometimes it has to do with your pelvic floor. Other times it has to do with your abdominals. Everyone's, it's gonna be a little bit different, but keep in mind, pelvis doesn't move and it's all squeezing from the hip. I call this adductor isometric or adductor squeeze. You could take this to the next step if this feels comfortable for you and make this into a bridge. So feet are flat and you're gonna squeeze the block as you lift your hips up. And then at the top, that's when you squeeze your glutes. And then you're gonna gradually let go of your glutes. You're gonna hold the squeeze and ease the squeeze until you reach back to the starting position. Those are your adductor variations. There's other exercises that you can incorporate so that you're not doing the same thing every time, but those are two examples. Second exercise is the glute bridge. The glute bridge is different than what I just did, I showed you, which was the adductor bridge. The glute bridge targets the gluteal muscles, which support the back of the pelvis. In addition, they are key hip extensors. Same setup, align your spine in neutral, and then feet, your shin should be perpendicular with the floor when you hit the top of the motion. You're going to squeeze your glutes to initiate the motion as your hips lift up. Hold this position for about three to five seconds, and then gradually let it go. Let the glute squeeze go until you reach the starting position. Again, you're gonna squeeze your glutes to initiate, carry the squeeze up to the top, hold for five seconds, and then gradually let go. This is different than the adductor. The adductor squeeze or the glute squeeze doesn't come till the top. This starts the motion. Where you should feel this is your glutes. Try to keep your legs as relaxed as you can so you don't feel too much of your quads working. If you feel your hamstrings kicking in, that tells me that your hamstrings are too active here or maybe you're too, your, your feet are too far away from you. So make that adjustment as needed. The third exercise is going to be a hip external rotation based exercise. What you need for this exercise is a looped band. Place the looped band around your knees or just above, and then feet are flat. Same setup as the bridge. You're gonna slowly rotate your hips open wide, hold for five seconds, and then gradually come back to the starting position. As you do this, you're gently engaged through your core and I recommend exhaling to open, inhaling to close. Same thing with bridge, exhale to lift, and when you're squeezing, exhale as you initiate the squeeze. When you are initiating the rotation here, it's coming from your hip or that wide portion at your upper leg versus at the knee. I know the band is at the knee, but we want the motion to come from specific hip rotators, so we want to visualize we're moving from here. Try it with different levels of resistance and it should feel a little bit different. Where you're going to feel this is like in your, the back of your butt, in the back of your hips. Similar areas of where you felt during the glute, but it's a little bit different. What I recommend is again, I didn't mention this for the other exercises, anywhere from like 10 to 20 or some for some people 30 reps or through two sets of 15, three sets of 10, depending on the time that you have. Anything is better than nothing. And if this is completely new to you, it's important to start low. So maybe that's five to eight reps per set. And you start with one to two sets and then gradually build up. Work with someone who can advise you based on your goals and your where you are right now. 
The final exercise that I'm going to show you in this video is a hip internal rotation based exercise. Place your band around your ankles. You may wanna put something underneath your knees because of comfort reasons. Transition into the hands and knees position and align your knees underneath your hips, your hands underneath your shoulders. Find neutral spine, and if you're not sure how to get there, check out the video below for the quadruped position. It's the positional basics video. From here, you may want to also place a couple pillows underneath your belly, depending on how pregnant you are. And um, that way, if you don't have the strength, we're giving your belly a little bit of assist so that your core muscles can work. From here, we're gonna just elevate the feet just a little bit so that we can rotate. And what we're doing is we're rotating the hips so that our feet go outward. And then we come back to the starting position. You don't really have to hold, but I do want you to pause or I encourage my patients to pause for a moment and then control back to the starting position. What I recommend is squeezing your glutes a little bit to assist in the glutes helping with rotation. What it looks like from the back, so I'm in the neutral position rotating, and then coming back. I didn't mention this with the hip external rotation, but you also can squeeze your glutes to, to facilitate those deep gluteals in recruiting as your legs open. Feel this deep in your butt. You also may feel this in your hip flexors, especially now if you're pregnant but where you feel it can also be how you hold tone in your muscles. So if your hip flexors tend to be the muscles that do most of the work for you, they might work. In the video, I talked about what, how mo a daily prenatal movement routine can affect the health of the baby because through your health. I went over four types of exercises. The first, was for your inner thigh, your adductor muscles. They help with the stability during walking in the front side of your pelvis. I then showed you a, the, a glute bridge, which is, targets the muscles that help stabilize the back of the hips and the pelvis. Then I showed you the hip rotation exercise. Those help with ro controlling the hips or stabilizing the hips and the pelvis as we turn and as we're walking so that we're not wobbling. And then I showed you a hip internal rotation exercise, which also works with the hip external rotators so that we're not waddling, wobbling, and we're not shifting through our pelvis. I mentioned that these exercises are just examples. They can be performed in different ways. It's just really important that we work these four areas that support our pelvis throughout our pregnancy so that we maintain stability through as our body changes. This is going to keep our nervous, the, your nervous system as when you're pregnant a, at, a, um, at a feeling safe. When our nervous system senses that we're not safe, like it does if we're, in, we're unstable somewhere, we, tart, so we start to tense. And that tension in our body communicates to our growing baby. Also, it affects the ease of our, it can affect the ease of our labor and delivery. The more tone and in fear we have in our body, the harder it is for our muscles to let go, our pelvic floor muscles specifically, when we are actually giving birth. A few key resources that, that resources to check out in the description would be how to, to set yourself up in some of these positions that I showed you, specifically supine. I'm gonna put the positional basics of that position of hands and knees, and then also how to engage your core in those positions. If you have any questions, please comment below or reach out directly. Other, a few helpful free resources that we have in the description are a, our pregnancy mini course, which goes in a lot more depth about this than I did in this video, as well as our postpartum healing guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Jocelyn with the Vagina Docs, and I'll see you on the next video.